When comparing the spot curve against the forward curve, it's very important that you understand what each point on the curves mean. On the spot curve, it refers to the interest rate that applies for the periods preceding it. For example, this point on the spot curve means that a two-year zero-coupon bond should have an annualised yield of 3%. This is the one-year forward curve, and these are the one-year forward rates plotted on the graph. For instance, this point means that the borrower who takes a one-year loan two years from now will have to pay 4.2% interest for that year. The points on the forward curve denote the interest that applies to the forward period. So be very clear on this major distinction between spot and forward rates. Even though these two rates are plotted on the same instance, their coverage period differs. We've learned the forward rate model in the last lesson that based on the principle of no arbitrage, the forward rate can be derived from the yield of a longer zero coupon bond divided by the yield of a shorter bond. Do note that when the spot curve is upward sloping, the forward curve should lie above it, as in this case. Conversely, if the spot curve is inverted, the forward curve should go below it. A related model to the forward rate model is the forward pricing model. If you think about it, the price of a $1 par 3-year zero coupon bond should be 0.9046 today, while the price of the 2-year zero coupon bond should be 0.9426 today. The price of the forward, denoted with the letter big F, must be 0.9597 to satisfy the no arbitrage condition. The relationship for forward pricing can be generalised to this equation. So to calculate the implied forward price, we divide the price of the longer zero coupon bond by the shorter zero coupon bond. In other words, 0.9597 is the price agreed today between the borrower and lender for a one-year zero coupon bond that begins in two years. This also means that the borrower and lender of this forward contract expect the one-year spot rate to be 4.2% two years later, so this is a fair price for the forward contract today. Now, the forward rate model can be extended to express any spot rate as the geometric mean of the one-year spot rate and a series of one-year forward rates. Likewise, the forward pricing model extended to express the price of any zero-coupon bond as the price of a one-year zero-coupon bond and the price of a series of forwards. This has bearings on the forward price evolution of a zero-coupon bond. So, for our example, if an investor buys a three-year zero-coupon bond at the three-year spot rate of 3.4%, the bond would be priced at 0.9046 today. Based on the spot and forward rates, he would expect the price to increase 2.5% gain in the first year, 3.5% in the second, and 4.2% in the third. This also means he expects the price of the zero coupon bond to be 0.9272 after the first year, 0.9597 after the second, and of course, $1 at maturity. This is the expected price evolution of the bond at this point when he bought the bond. Let's see if this works out to be the case if the spot rates pan out the way as forecasted by the forward rates. To help in the illustration, let's imagine that today is the 1st of January 2021, and you just bought a three-year zero-coupon bond where its price is forecast to evolve over the next three years as shown. Now, let's time travel one year ahead to 2022. Based on expectations from the forward curve in 2021, what should the spot curve look like on 1st of January 2022? Well, one very common misconception is to simply copy over the forward curve which is not too accurate. If you look at the forward curve, the one-year forward rate covers this period, which corresponds to this period one year later. This one-year spot rate is therefore 3.5%, 
which is correct. However, the other two rates are wrong. The F21 rate only covers this period, whereas the two-year spot rate covers the first two years. What you should use is the F12 forward rate instead, which covers the two years. The F12 rate is the geometric mean of the two component forward rates. Solve it and we get 3.85%. This is the expected two-year spot rate in 2022. So in 2022, your bond has two years to maturity. So if the actual spot rates turn out to be exactly as forecasted, we should discount the bond by the two-year spot rate of 3.85%, so it should be priced at 0.9272. Based on the price one year earlier, we get exactly 2.5% gain in the first year, which is the expected gain. This example illustrates that if spot rates go as forecasted by the forward rates, the realised gain should be the same as the expected gain. As a practice, see if you can determine the expected gain in the second year if the one-year spot rate rises as expected. First, let's determine what the forecasted one-year spot rate should be. As we can see from the forward curve, the F21 rate corresponds to the one-year forecasted spot rate for 2023. The forecasted spot rate is therefore 4.2%. So if the actual spot rate is 4.2%, we discount the zero coupon bond by one period and we get a price of 0 0.9597. Calculate the actual gain and it is 3.5% as forecasted. And lastly, the third year gain is regardless of the new spot rate as the bond will mature at $1 par. The realised gain is 4.2%. As we can see, if spot rates go as forecasted, the price of the bond will evolve as forecasted, so the gain each period is also the same. Now let's go back to 2023. Let's say instead of 4.2% spot rate, the rate falls to 3.2%. As a practice, determine the price of a one-year zero-coupon bond under this scenario. Well, you shouldn't have a hard time with this. Discount $1 by 3.2% for a year and we get 0 0.969. In this case, your zero-coupon bond rises to this price instead of 0 0.9597 as forecasted by the forward rates in 2021. Your return for the year is correspondingly higher at 4.5% instead of 3.5%. This illustrates an opportunity for active bond fund managers. If the manager expects future spot rates to be lower than what is forecasted by the forward rates, she should buy bonds as the funds stand to profit more if that happens. In other words, if what she believes turns out to be true, she can get a return above expectations if she sells the bond before maturity. This is the basis for a popular form of active bond fund management, which is the strategy of rolling down the yield curve. The concept of this is quite simple. If the yield curve is upward sloping, the forward rates would suggest a raised yield curve in the future. However, this may often not be the case. If the bond fund manager expects the central bank to keep benchmark interest rates low for the next few years, the yield curve is more likely to remain where it is instead of moving up. As such, a manager can potentially earn a higher return from buying and selling a bond with longer maturity than to match the bond maturity with the investment horizon. For example, if the investment horizon is just one year, the investor can potentially earn a higher return by purchasing a 10-year bond and sell it after one year than to simply buy a one-year bond and hold it until maturity. Let's see how this works. We'll assume that the yield curve remains the same after one year instead of moving up as suggested by the forward curve. First, let us establish the return for a $100 par one-year bond 
with 2.5% coupon paid annually. After one year, the return is simply 2.5%, regardless of the yield curve movement, as the bond matures at $100 par. And let's examine the first year return for a $100 10-year bond with 5% coupon paid annually. After one year, the coupon return is $5, but because the bond rolls down the yield curve, where it is valued at a 9-year yield of 4.8%, the price appreciates to $101.43. The gain in this scenario is 6.43%, much higher than the 2.5% gain if the manager had simply bought a one-year bond. This is the basis for the rolling down the yield curve strategy. The combination of a higher yield in bonds with longer maturities, with the potential price appreciation as the bond rolls down the yield curve, gives the active manager opportunity to extract higher gains from bond investment. The condition for this to happen is that the yield curve should be upward sloping, the future spot rate is lower than forecast, and to buy and sell bond with maturity longer than investment horizon. You're watching an excerpt from our comprehensive animation library. For more videos like these, head on down to prepnuggets.com. At PrepNuggets, let us do the hard work for you.